Today, we're going to look at footwear. Footwear for animals, all sorts of shapes and sizes. We'll start with the largest. <laughs> it looks so like it would fit an elephant, but it was a, a poultice boot. This is a poultice boot for horses. There's a couple of them. Now, some of you may remember that people had poultices, hot bread poultices, put on areas if you got a bit poisoned or something. That was wrapped around and it was said to draw out the poison. Well, this is the same sort of thing, but for horses, cart horses. They had to be quite large because he got to get his foot in there with a shoe on it, stuff the hot brand round it, and it was strapped up. And with luck, it would work. <laughs> That was made by a Mr. Wood in Wakefield, very neat job, with all leather. And this one had a wooden base. Again, very neat. So that's poultice boots for horses. Next, we have these chaps. And these are all lead. Quite heavy, I think it's about it's a kilo and a half, I think. Now, um, I understand that these were put on to, the, to train the high steppers to strengthen their sinews and whatever, uh, just as an exercise. Luckily, I only had them on the front feet. Again, what a skilled job to make that, wasn't it? These ones were fairly common. They were lawn boots. And when the ponies or horses were pulling mowing machines, especially on the lawns and tennis courts, you couldn't have hoof marks on Madame's tennis court. So they had these lawn boots, as they called them. We had all sizes. Little pony or little horse, you had a little, little shoe. <laughs> Right, the next ones were the bullocks shoes, shoes for oxen. These would have gone on working oxen, but they, they also put them on when they were, the cattle drovers were moving the cattle distant, great distances by road and by lane. They would have been shod, but these were uh, land oxen, working oxen. I mean, before we had cart horses, oxen did all the, all the work on the land. If you look at Doomsday Book, in there they assess a village by the number of oxen teams the village had. That is a shoe from an ox, which was found at Waterbury. See, the, the, the bullock's got cloven hoofs, uh, so they'd put one of these on each side, nailed on, similar to a horseshoe. Occasionally, they only did the inside one, I'm told, because often bullocks tend to push out a bit. But uh, that was found here. This, a similar shoe, but this this was where the, the French made them. I actually took this one off a of working ox when I was working over there. Uh, they started off as that. The, I think these have been mass produced. Those would not have been. And that's how they would have come. And then the farrier would have shaped that round to fit that particular oxen as that was done. Incidentally, I understand that all of our, a lot of our measures of length, you know, chains, rods, poles, perches, and all of this, it all went back to the days of oxen. Is how much work an oxen could do, an ox could do. Uh, five and a half yards was a rod, pole, or perch. 
and uh, that was the length of the pole that he had when he needed to jolly them along a bit. Had a point on the end which couldn't be any longer than a barley corn. Now horses would have had to have worked in all weathers, wet, snowy, icy, so they made provision for that. This is a some would have taken the the nails out and replaced them with special nails that could uh, help grip and studs which could be screwed into the uh, into the shoe. But, uh, they would take out the ordinary nail and replace it with that one. But this was a this is manufactured to it's adjustable. It might fit more than one shaped foot. And got studs in to help grip. No possible. Neat little job. And uh, this one's next. That shoe, I am told, was 12th century. And people say, how do I know that that's 12th century? Because there are men, <laughs> people who specialize in this sort of thing. And uh, the wavy edge ones, I think it was to do with the way they made those holes in them. It just pushed the metal out. But well, that's uh, lasted quite well, 12th century. I've got all of the horseshoes here. Most people say they're upside down and they've, the uh, luck falls out. But I'm guided by the Lorreners, worshipful company of Lorreners. And on their shield, they've got lots of horseshoes and they are all up that way. So I put my horseshoes up that way. I've just got an odd one somewhere else as an insurance up the, what you would call the right way. Now, these were goat's boots for the regimental goats, the mascots. These are brand new and it's stamped on the bottom that they were size four. And I've been trying to get a photograph or a postcard of a goat with boots on and I've not been successful yet. So. Uh, if anyone's got a photograph of a goat with boots on, let me know. This one was termed a covering shoe. And that was worn when the stallion was mating the mares. Now, in my innocence, I always thought it went on the stallion, because oft times they, they walked from the stud farms to the stables. You know, his shoes upon the roads would get quite sharp. But the lady was in here one day, she said, don't be daft boy, they put those on the mare. Because if everything, everything wasn't quite right for the mare, she would start lashing out, kicking him. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> mind, if he got kicked with that, it might steady his harder a bit, but uh, that, that is what they were, it's a covering boots. Very well made. This one's another snow ice shoe. But I mean, all you can do is to feel sorry for the horse that had to wear these. That is heavy. It could be adjusted. It's uh, got these <laughs> bits on the bottom to break the ice or walk through it, but uh, I mean, you can only feel sorry for the creature if you've got one of these on each corner to carry around. Well, that's some of the shoes we've got here. As with all of this, there's a, a story behind every item. It's fascinating. 